Hello, everybody. We're down to the last four. Some say the final four teams. And your broskies in basketball are here to give you your core four and so much more so you can get this bread. Recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome. Welcome on in to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information. And we are powered by the, the world's, near I say, the universe's greatest website, that is DrRoto.com. Get on over there and check out everything happening with Doc and the crew. I am your humble host. My name is Jay Heinrich. I happen to be the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. I'll be staring this thing down the tracks. You can find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Follow me and I will smash that follow back button. That is what I do it's true it is true it's damn true let's get right to two of the absolute best in the business the brightest minds in the business to do it starting with el capitan himself the captain of the green screens media ship i do the train he does the ship eric does everything else all the other vehicles Find him on X at MC Holland 34, the OG Money Mike, Mr. Mike Holland. Mike, what it do, baby? What it do, baby? Here for the uh, final four DFS slate. A uh, lot of money for a two game slate, as we were talking pre shows. We want to get our hands on some of that, some of that sweet cash. But uh, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, it comes up this Saturday, and then obviously Monday is the final. Then we get uh, the women's final four, which is shaping up to be a good one as well. So it is going to be an awesome time to wrap up the season. And we're into the off season. We did some off season content. Was that last night? Because these days are just blending in together. Uh, yeah, today a lot more portal news dropping. Uh, the big board is all over the place right now. So. Yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, catch you guys up at the end of the uh, the festivities from the Final Four. I get you guys all caught up with the ins and outs of what is happening. And also, it's been kind of bored because not a lot of college basketball going on. Obviously, got Indiana State and the NIT Final, which would be a little bit fun. But had a little NBA two-pick with Pascal Siakam's demon play coming through. Yeah, so, so, you know, a little $20 turned into 90 or whatever. No big deal. Jeez. Is there a more entertaining team not in the tournament? Like, is there a more ever been like a more must watch team <laughs> than Indiana State? It's not in the tournament. Like, that's the type of basketball that they're playing yeah. right now, and that's it's keeping the NIT relevant. If we're being quite honest, mm -hmm. but hey, that's another time, another story for another <laughs> day, because we have to get to the man who is last in the intros. But you bet your bottom dollar that he is first in your hearts the baron of bread of green screens media who you can find in those twitter streets at fantasy nav he's eric the blue that's mr eric roma what's happening man man stoked for this uh for this final four right i think that we've got some uh some really interesting matchups in in store for us and i think we have a pretty good shot of seeing Maybe the two best teams in all of college basketball face <laughs> off for the national title, which is yeah. a uh, is a rare luxury, right? We typically don't see that play out this way over the course of the tournament. So, hoping for a fun round of basketball, hoping for an electric title game, and trying to figure out why DraftKings is putting twenty k slates on <laughs> or twenty k top prizes on two game slates. But nonetheless, we are here to break that all down and to help you end the season on a profitable note. And we've got some of our favorites in the chat alongside with us. We got Cam C. Thuggin with the sup, fellas. A little bit of uh, breaking news. Cam and I have officially made some plans for when he's in San Antonio for next year's Final Four. Might have to get a little uh, little one and done meetup around the Final what? Four going. So, Ooh. me and Jay aren't is, uh, that far away. We're not that far I mean, away. 
Austin might as well be like Oklahoma. You know what I mean? Like, oh, wow, man. Cam, you man. Oh, no, you, you just this is dude. this is this is freshly developing. We'll get the whole crew together. I'm sure there are going to be plenty of breadheads in San Antonio. We'll get <laughs> we'll get everyone down here for some margaritas. And we got David Galloway jumping in. Let's finish the finish the year strong, boys. You know that's exactly what we're trying to do. And look, Cam's already he's already sending the warm invitation. You got some beers waiting for you down here in Say Town. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'll show up for that. <laughs> no, of course, we would make that happen for sure. Thanks for hopping in there. Live chat is rolling with Cam and David. Appreciate them hopping in there for sure. Gentlemen, this is one of those where, uh, again, <clears throat> like we were talking about in the in the pre-show meeting, would be nice to get some bigger, uh, you know, top prizes earlier on in the year rather than 20K to first on the, uh, the uh, you know, this two gamer. But uh, we're going to take it. We're never going to take down or turn down an opportunity to, uh, to go after 20K. So, of course, we've got Alabama. And UConn, a 164-point implied total. And then NC State, 11-point dogs against Purdue, of course. So like we were talking about earlier, the opportunity to see two of the teams that are the the ones basically at, you know, about December where we knew, okay, those are the two best teams. And they'll probably get, hopefully they end up playing each other. We could tell. So, um, Mike, maybe a quick overview of this two gamer, different ways that we can look to approach this, um, you know, good totals all around, uh, how are we going to look at the value, things like that. What are your thoughts, Mike? So, you know, what's funny is that the entire year, right, we always scrounge around, we look for value. Sometimes it's just a lot of value. Sometimes there isn't any value. Well, a lot of the teams, when there's not a lot of value on the slate, we actually end up targeting targeting these four teams, honestly, so it's going to be really interesting to talk about the value Alabama because they play so many guys. There's always typically a, a you know, a guy that's a little bit cheaper that can go three, three X or so. But that's really all you need to, uh, to make your, make your deal work. UConn um, with their couple of guys off the bench are always cheap and always good plays, especially in blowout situations. This one, I don't think is going to be this one. Well, I mean, I don't want to say it's not going to be because they've just been blowing everybody out, but uh, I think the value is certainly going to be the difference in winning 20K. It usually is. But sifting through, um, when we have played these guys the entire year, NC State, they've got a couple of guys that, uh, you know, 5,100 and, and less that you could feel comfortable slotting in. And then Purdue, like their guys got price decreases. <laughs> so there's there's really only two guys o- over 5K, and then everyone else is sub 5K. So – yeah, they're, I mean, I actually, from a, you know, these two game slates, you always worry, like, how, there's just going to be so many of the same lineup, right? And that's going to be the case in a lot of points, but where you can get different, right? See, using different value pieces, um, it's going to allow us to, if you want to play Zach ED, you, you could. Um, if you want to play, mm-hmm. you know, play King, you, you can. If you want to play Zach ED with another stud, you potentially could. I mean, that's always a thing, like, you know, just get 2X, 3X from your, some of your value plays, and then you get, uh, you know, <laughs> the 6X from Zach Eady and the 6X from Donovan Klingon, and it doesn't matter what the guys do, uh, sub 5K. But there's enough options where you got guys, like, that actually play 30 minutes on Purdue that are going to play <laughs> 30 minutes. So, uh, yeah, this two-gamer, I feel like, is completely different than any other two-gamer that we really see. I really love, you know, we always get upset because DraftKings beginning of the year, they put guys at 3K, Riley Minix, and Minix ends up being 8,400 in the uh, first game of the tournament, right? So we don't have any of that crap going on. We've got, like, fair pricing. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty fun. So, Eric, any any thoughts, man? How do you attack, like, a two-gamer? Uh, any any thoughts on that before we move on? Yeah, I mean, look the the story is is really how how you get different, especially if you're if you're trying to ship that that twenty k top prize. So you know there there are some tried and true things that we can do. You know, not being shy about leaving a good amount of salary is a very good way to do it. Um, not being shy about just completely overloading one side of the two games is another way to get about there. But also like 
to a certain extent, you have to you have to kind of you know buy into some some game scripts that might play out that are going to open up opportunities for guys, right? Like if we if we believe that UConn is going to continue blowing people out by thirty points a game, there's probably some garbage time minutes for some of their ancillary pieces, right? So like you know really think through all the different scenarios in terms of how these two games can play out, and make sure that before you hit your the hit the submit button, your your lineup makes sense, right? It tells a story. To where if this happens, all of these correlating pieces are, are going to fall into place. Too. Has to tell a story, especially on these short slates, man. Has to tell a story. Is it time for us to finish our story, guys? <laughs> 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 it's WrestleMania never ending week. story. It's final four week. <laughs> what, a, what a time what a for you, sir. Wonderful time of my year. Of course, <laughs> and of course. The most wonderful time of my show is when we hear from Forklift Jeremy. What it hey, do, yo. gang? Dropping the fire emojis in the chat with the old salute and the round ball as well. Good to hear from you, Jeremy. Keep those live comments coming. If you're watching, we're doing this show. We're filming this on Wednesday. So make sure that you follow Everybody on Twitter, follow at one and done CBB. That's the show page. Well over a thousand followers. We are very proud of that. So thank you for being a part of the Green Screens Media Universe by following us over there. And you can also follow us on TikTok at Get Green Screens. Our guy Napesy Hustle dropping some bets. You see him all over the old socials. Our guy at the real Napier. Never too far away of course but make sure you push all those buttons for us like and subscribe and follow us also uh, if there's any updates between now and we're filming live and of course this saturday slate that will tip at 609 p.m on the east coast on saturday of course 20k to first as we mentioned earlier let's get into these games alabama against UConn, who has been indeed beating the brakes off of everyone, and it doesn't even, it's not competitive. It's, it's like for all, for the competitive games that NC State has played in, and for some of the, you know, for some of the competitiveness that Purdue has had, and like UConn is just, it's a steamroller, and um, yeah, it's been, I mean, it's, they definitely. We saw it firsthand, Jay. We got, we last year, firsthand last year in person at the at the West Region. All three of us did out there in Vegas. This is this program is on a roll right now. Remember when we talk about our our spreads here? We use Ken Palm's metric, so plus eight is uh, is what Ken Palm is on DK right now. If you go to DraftKings Sportsbook, it's eleven and a half points for you <laughs> they're like nah you know, so, you know we're not you're not getting this not getting it that easy this time you're gonna have to pay it for a little bit of, for some points they're gonna have to put uh beat them by a dozen but uh yeah i mean yukon 315th in tempo doesn't matter because they do every time they have the ball first in offensive efficiency they're such a well-oiled machine. And then you pair that with the fourth-rated defensive efficiency, and uh, that's why you have a team that's just, just absolutely – it's not even close. It's dusting people. Alabama third in offense efficiency, so no slouch there. But then 105th in defensive efficiency. Uh, the old uh, – Not great. Yucko. Right there. And they get up and down to ninth in tempo. So Alabama, big time pace up for UConn, who every time they get the ball <laughs> is scoring it. Like, this might get – you talked about the blowout, Eric, earlier. You talked about the blowout scenario. Like, this is the game, especially if Alabama's not hitting their threes. This could get out of hand in a jiffy for sure. But let's start with Alabama though and start with Mike. Some superstars here and definitely not as expensive as some of the other stars that we will talk about on this slate to get into this Crimson Tide team. What do you think about <laughs> Roll Tide? Well, what do I think about Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada's where you always start this conversation? I think this is our 54th show. 
I uh, believe we we're going to do a showdown slate for the final for the finals. So that'll make 55 oh, DFS yes. slates. Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada, we have probably talked about what to do with these two guys. We never play them together. We always play one or the other because the price tags. Well, price tags are down a bit, so if you're thinking game script, Bama keeps it close, probably one or both are going to have to have huge games. Now, Mark Sears at 8,400. Kind of come back down to earth for him, right? Like 34, 27. Now he had that 58 spot. Um, against Grand Canyon on the optimal lineup, won someone 20K on that one with the Tyon Grant Foster run back. But really, it's kind of been disappointing if you've been paying, you know, 8,400, 8,800, 9,000 for him recently. So feel like as a as far as like, you know, building your lineup, very contrarian uh, piece that you can go into because like you said, Jay, like a lot of people are thinking like, man, this could get out of hand pretty quickly. The one way it doesn't really get out of hand is one of these two guys has a monster game. So you're probably going to get them at lower ownership because a lot of people are going to want to get into the cheaper pieces on the BAM side, especially when we have to figure out what's going on with the trail right. but Mark Sears, thousand dollars more than Aaron Estrada at 8,400. I mean, I'm never going to talk you off of Mark Sears because he can put up 50 now against this UConn defense. Right. Pretty tough to see that. It feels like his ceiling might only be, you know, 35 to 40. So contrarian large field only for that 20K. Aaron Estrada, you get that thousand dollar price break, but he's been more of a cash play, right? Like he hasn't really been the tournament, you know, the, the tournament winner for you. I mean, 26, 33, 36, 36, 35. Obviously, the price is down a little bit, uh, but really just kind of paying off the cash, um, you know, for cash games with that, uh, with that, those performances out there. But we know he does it across the board. Same thing here. Like, could he have a big game? Yeah, I mean, he could have a big game, obviously. There should be a lot of possessions in this game. Yeah, um, both we'll of see them are they... playing max minutes, too. Yeah, it's I max mean, minutes. It's, it's max minutes for both like, of these guards. So It's going to be hard to see one of those two come off the floor in this game. I would be be shocked if Sears comes off the floor. Shrata might come off for a minute or two. If you want to play the foul game theory, then that could be huge, right? Um, you know, that that's something that could maybe lend a hand to, to some of the cheaper guards. But, yeah, I mean, Sears and Estrada – 8,400, 7,400. Jay, if you're – if like, do you want a piece of one or the other? Do you feel like Sears. it's even necessary? Yeah. You'd I, rather I, have I if you had to? I think, yeah, I think it's Sears uh, in a bubble or not. I, I'm thinking Sears over Strata. I don't mind paying $1,000 more for Sears and his ceiling. I know this yeah, is a ceiling. tough defensive matchup. But, again, I don't know. I think a lot of people are going to go to – are going to chase that Grant Nelson wonder game. I think people are going <laughs> to – really – I think let's do it. I mean, I as soon as I got off of it, you know, I did win that ticket with you. Him, said that every win. slate. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, let's do it. Hey, no, but uh, I would rather have Sears at, at eighty four hundred. Like you said, you know, play, if we're playing the game here, like you're talking about another guard. Thinking about Ryland Griffin at fifty seven hundred, to where okay, if if it's Sears and let's say Estrada does get into foul trouble, or that, you know, obviously Estrada had. 26 fantasy points last game and Griffin had 34. So at this price right now, I mean, if we're playing, if we're playing, if we're doubling up, if we're getting different, like Eric was saying, we need to do uh, in his overview. Like I think a Sears Griffin stack is something that's yeah. worth, worth looking into here for sure. What about the big man? All right. You know, all jokes aside about, about Grant Nelson, oh, like, no, uh, 6,200. Can, can you go there? <laughs> I think you have to in tournaments, like in the large field. You there's how many guys at this price tag have a 50 point ceiling? There's none on this basis. I'll, there's no one really, and really in college basketball, including Grant there? Nelson, including <laughs> including Grant <laughs> Nelson. Absolutely, 6200. Um, if he just doesn't foul, if he stays on the court, I mean, he's just got fantasy goodness written all over him. I'm more interested, Jay, in Grant Nelson than I am Rylan Griffin. The only reason why is because Ladrill Reitzel returned to practice on Tuesday. He is day to day. They said he was limited. I don't. I mean, it's it's you know we're Wednesday. We're heading into Saturday. It feels like he's going to play, so that's going to take away a little bit from Rylan Griffin. Doesn't mean I want to cross off Rylan Griffin, but is if I'm looking at wild either card though on this slate, like yeah, like kind, right I mean, now? kind of a lot. Fifty-two hundred. No, I mean, I mean, just in terms of like right now, we're a few days out. Like, and if yeah. right cells in the, if we know right cells going to be on the court and play, obviously that affects how we look at. That makes me more interested in in Grant Nelson. I, I yeah. feel like you know, like especially yeah. if if we know right cells going to play. But uh, yeah, it's that's one of those things where you got to make sure that you're following all your boys here. 
an at one and done CBB because when that right cell news drops, as soon as it does, we're going to be on it. So, and I've been on the wrong side of it the last two slates because I knew everyone was going to go there and I tried to fade it and it did not work out either way. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll have to pay attention because Griffin is tied to right cell. Um, yeah, you know, Pringles there at 5,900. I mean, he's another guy. This like he's just like Grant Nelson. Like <laughs> the ceiling for both of these guys are crazy for their price tags, but they foul a lot. I mean, Gr- Pringle had a game this year where he fouled out in six minutes, five <laughs> fouls in six minutes. Like that. Uh, like the shot rate isn't where you want it to be with him. He's got an outstanding rebounding rate, can block shots. They need his size. I, there's, I don't see how Don McClingan doesn't put him in foul trouble, which is going to make this game. Uh, Real interesting. I mean, Grant Nelson's going to have to play oh on Donovan God. Klingon in this one. We're going to get the Grant be... Nelson game. We're going <laughs> to get the Grant Nelson game again, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, he can bring bring uh, Klingon away from the basket if he's uh, – the thing is that Grant Nelson would have to uh, – he's going to have a caravan on him. I mean, Pringle's going to be on uh, – Klingon's going to be on Pringle because Pringle can't shoot, so Klingon's going to camp out in the lane. He's literally just going to camp out in the lane. So – Unless Alabama decides to go, and I don't think they can because Grant Nelson will just foul cling. Unless they decide to put Grant Nelson at the five and roll with like Reitzel, Griffin, Estrada, and Sears around him, I just don't see it because UConn's just too big. Um, you know, even their guards are big guards. So uh, let's bring Eric into this one, man. Uh, there's some cheapies on here. You got Jaron Stevenson, you got Mo Diabate, who was kind of the hero in the Grand Canyon game randomly and then completely disappeared the last two games. And then you have <laughs> Sam Walters, who's just kind of there. So obviously Stevenson had the big game, man. What are your thoughts on on him? But he's starting obviously because Reitzel is not been starting. So what's going to happen there? What are your that's thoughts? that's exactly the thing, right? Like Stevenson did have that that big game, right? Put up nearly thirty points, still sitting at four K. But that that was that was everything to do with with Reitzel being being out, right? So you know the. The story for him is going to boil down to availability for Reitzel. It sounds like Reitzel is participating in the team's practice as of yesterday. So, you know, probably ramping in the right direction. You know, if, if Reitzel's in, I mean, you almost have to scratch Stevenson out, right? If if he ends up being out, then Stevenson probably becomes, like, one of the most popular plays on the entire board. So, you know, the, the, the thing with it is, like, it, it, even if Reitzel's out, right, it kind of feels like this is this is a, a, a bit of a trap, you know. Like he had it's a trap. He had eight eight fantasy points in the game there to his explosion. That was also a game where Reitzel was out, right? So like you're not you're not you're not able to just put in in permanent ink that he's going to get you twenty five or thirty, uh, even in the event that Reitzel's out. So you know he he will be a kind of pivotal point on the the slate overall, but. You know, I, I think he's probably someone to kind of deprioritize. And then the other guys that you mentioned, right, like Diabate had his, you know, his num pop off and then you know, immediately came back to his low single-digit self. Sam Walters is, you know, barely cracking double digits on um, on, a, on a routine basis. So, yeah, you, you can't really feel great about either of the guys going. And then just looking at the, the game script, right, like, you know, we uh, and apparently the betting public expects Alabama to be trailing in this one, so there's there's probably not going to be a whole lot of run for these sort of ancillary pieces for the tide. Rotation getting smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter as these games go along. They needed Diabate in that first game to come up big. They will not need him the same way in. This one, I don't imagine, especially without this, this big time foul trouble is the only way that I see it happening for sure. But I'm in on Sears. I'm paying for him. And I do like Griffin again in this one. Understand if he's not your guy, especially if Reitzel is in the lineup. Something to pay attention to there um, for sure on the Alabama side. Make sure you hop in that live chat if you're hanging out with us live. If so, we appreciate you, and we see you hanging out with us in the lobby. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and do your part in the Green Screens Media Universe by hitting that like button, a thumbs up there, and also hit that subscribe button. And tell all of the hoop heads in your life about Green Screens Media and one and done just because the basketball season is coming to a close that does not mean 
that one and done is going anywhere. Mike mentioned earlier his big board, his transfer portal, big board. Before we move on to UConn, Mike, anybody real quick that has jumped in over the last couple of days that is uh, was maybe a surprise to you or even maybe somebody that's committed already? Yeah, it's just been <laughs> – it's been bonkers. I mean, Florida Atlantic's essentially there looks like their entire team's jumping in. <laughs> we'll probably have a new number one with John L. Davis uh, and Great Osabor. I mean, another guy that's in the portal. Uh, you know, we had some commitments today. Uh, Miami uh, getting Brandon Johnson from ECU. I think that's a, an awesome, awesome fit for them. Uh, you know, Makai Mason going to Washington uh, from Rice. I think he's an underrated player. Think of like Quincy Olivari, like kind of the same deal. Like, People are like, oh, we saw Quincy, you know, tear up Texas down here and then yeah. transfer over to Xavier and all of a sudden became, you know, nine, almost held that 8,000, 8, 9,000 plus price tag for the last 10 games of the year. So, uh, yeah, man, Louisville uh, got Rain Smith and uh, they got your boy Terrence Edwards from JMU. So <laughs> good job by Coach Kelsey. Yeah, a lot, a lot happening. And I'm sure more has happened in the 20 minutes that we've been on the air. So, yeah, for sure. Eric, we were talking in the pre-show. Osa War is probably going to end up top ten on the on yeah, the big board. There. Yeah, give give or take, right? Like kind of twelve to fifteen uh, jumped out to me when I first saw the news. But as you know, as you start going name by name, it's like no, he's definitely ahead of a lot of these harder. guys. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, and and all of this is is in the context of this the the vacuum of this very moment, right? Um, John L. Davis was not in the portal when we broke down our uh, our list last night, right? So, like, you know, not only are our guys like Osobor competing against the the players that we've already ranked, but I kind of get the feeling that there are going to be at least a few more players that make their way into the portal. So that that deck is just, is just going to be yeah. constantly shuffling. Yeah, no doubt about it. So make sure that you're following along all off season. Transfer photos are going to be popping, and so is one and done. Sleep, we used to say we'll sleep in May. We we don't really, it doesn't stop. We don't but sleep. sleep. We're just doing this for the breadheads because we appreciate y'all yeah, yeah. hanging out with us. Cam hopping in the live chat saying it uh, sounds like Wade Taylor is going to be portaling soon. And then Padula took, yeah. Jay, you getting in the portal too, or what? You want yeah, to feel the 68 or that eligibility? I live, I, live, I live in the portal, my guy. Okay, I I exist in the portal, uh, just to be honest. Uh, and Cam also said he's here in Pandula to Creighton. Our OU was glad to hear he's not likely a thorn for UNC any more. Any thoughts on Pandula, real quick? Either one of you guys? Uh, I would love him to go to Creighton because I need a redemption story. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are, I, are, I have a feeling that Mike's going to do the same thing I did with Arizona this year and pick Creighton to win again <laughs> next year. And, and who knows? I, just, I, love, I love the idea of, of you guys being pot committed over the course of multiple seasons, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> the yeah, entire Creighton just... roster is going to turn over. Mike's still going to be it's saying really they, they got yeah. it locked in. <laughs> Cam shot now truly in the, in the live chat. Yeah, we – that guy, doesn't miss, does he? This doesn't so miss. Weird. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Love some truly Donovan. And we love this UConn side of this game. Donovan Klingon at 8,300. So the price kings for both of these teams in this first matchup, nobody more than 8.4K on either team. Bunch of stars. And again, uh, three guys over 6k and then everybody else is below. So what do we need to do with the Huskies? Again, a team that in this pace and this pace up, yeah, they can score 95. Yeah. And you wouldn't, easily. you wouldn't even bat an eye at it. No. Yeah. I mean, there's Klingon who should absolutely destroy this interior <laughs> of, uh, of Yukon, uh, or excuse me, of, uh, of Alabama. And he's coming off, what, three out of five in the 50s? I mean, that was – everybody's going to be mega, Jeez. mega popular. I don't know. Could he be because of Weedy? Like, maybe he's not. So, maybe he's the way to go. And maybe we're just thinking, oh, people see that he's just putting up 50s every other game. And, uh, you know, there's Zach Heedy. I don't want to pay that price tag for it. So, I'll just play Donovan Klingon in a plus spot against Bama. And we were all over Baycott in this matchup. 
why wouldn't we be over at all over Donovan Klingon, who's playing at a ridiculous level right now? So, yeah, I mean, I just I think he's going to be popular because of Edie's price tag. You know, Edie hasn't been very popular at all um, because it's just so damn hard to play. I think now you could kind of play some pieces around Edie in this in this slate, especially with his own teammates being cheap. But I still think people are just going to go directly to Klingon, especially watching what he did to Illinois' number two offense um, was was pretty pretty ridiculous. So, yeah, I'm interested. I I do like, and maybe this is more of a hot take, I do like Tristan Newton a little bit more at 7900 The $400 savings. Tristan Newton kind of a forgotten guy right now, right? A 16 and a 34. Um, you know, he had a 43, a 30. Uh, so, you know, really – Really not doing it at that, you know, that 8K, 9K price tag. So I feel like in a pace up spot right here, this is where long rebounds come into play. Alabama 19th in the country in three point rate, long rebounds. This is like a potential nearly triple double, if not triple double spot for Tristan Newton, who has a 23% combined rebounding rate, a 31% assist rate. I could easily see him going 18, you know, 18, nine, and eight here with a couple of steals. So uh, while, you know, Klingon, sometimes you worry about the foul trouble. Sometimes you worry that, you know, he plays the first, you know, seven minutes and then you don't see him for four minutes. Tristan Newton's probably not going to come off the floor in this one unless it's a blowout. Um, but even at the blowout at 7,900, they still don't, they only play a few guys off the bench either way. So I have a lot of interest in Tristan Newton here. Ken Spencer, obviously a nice pivot off of Newton at 7,200. Uh, he's played fantastic the last couple of games. He just lit up Illinois there for 42 fantasy points. Um, you know, can can kind of get you, you know, some ancillary uh, stats along with his, uh, you know, three point shooting. So, you know, that he has 30 plus, 40 plus fantasy upside if everything kind of comes together, especially in this type of pace. Now you start getting to the, the, the two cheap starters, man, which uh, Alex Caravan and Stefan Castle, they're 6K and 5,800. Now, Caravan is, I think, like he's been super popular, but he hasn't paid people off. Like he's been kind of middling this 5,900, low 6K range, 17, 24, 19, 19. People tr- keep trying to get into this UConn side, but Spencer and um, Klingon have been doing the heavy lifting. And Stefan Castle at 5,800 was on the optimal, uh, you know, in the uh, Sweet 16. So Caravan, probably, maybe uh, I don't see 40% ownership because you have a lot of cheapies on this one. There weren't a lot of cheapies on the last, uh, on the last two game slate that we had. So, yeah, I have some interest in Alex Caravan. He's really got to get it done with knocking down his three ball. He's got to rebound the ball well. You, you can't play him with Klingon because he needs rebounds, and Klingon <laughs> needs to have a down rebounding game for Caravan to really go off. At least in my head, I feel like that's the right thing and kind of what's been playing out here. Uh, like when you see Klingon having these monster games, you don't see Alex Caravan anywhere near 20 fantasy points. So, um 6,000 for Caravan, kind of interesting as a game stacking piece. I would not just play him (laughs) from this side. Castle at 5,800. I mean, yeah, I just, I have more interest in Cam Spencer and and Newton. I mean, 5,800, it's just, it's kind of just okay. Um, You love the pace. You love that he can probably get to the basket at any time he wants. The rebounding rate and assist rate are up there for his position. You know, nearly both 20%. Not a great three point shooter. So, you know, I was, I kind of look at that. I'm like, man, if you could just, he had the three ball. I mean, he wouldn't be 5,800 if he did. And if he didn't play on the scene, he'd probably be 9K on any other team. So um, not as interested as if I had to pick between the two. I think Caravan, just from a contrarian like tournament style, I would play him. Uh, Castle is just kind of tough when you look at Newton Spencer and then all the guards that are on this slate, especially the Purdue guys who are really cheap. The guard that I am most interested in uh, down here in the cheapies is Hassan Diara. We know it's 4,400. Do I need to talk about it, right? 17, 23, like he'll, he'll get into the 20s. He will probably be mega chalk. He was mega chalk on the last slate. Uh, so I mean, take Jay, are you just are you just locking in? The, I locked in DR on yeah. all just twenty-two lineups. Yeah, take it feels like square. it's kind of a free square here, right? Like, any thoughts between Klingon and Newton, Jay? Before we uh, before we let Eric have his shine here. Well, no, I think obviously <laughs> what okay, I'm Klingon ninety percent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, would. Everybody's going to play him. I, I agree. I don't know if it'll be 90%, but I think he's going to be very popular, and he should be. He should be. But, again, this is this is a good defensive Alabama team. And you think I Alabama tries to run him off the court, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I don't know, man. That's tough. I'm, I'm actually more interested in spending a little bit farther down on, uh, on this side – 
especially with Diara and and you know Caravan at six K flat. I'm just is he just do? Is he is it gonna happen? <laughs> That's what it know. feels like. like, it's like it damn just it. feels like it could. It just feels like it could. But Eric, speaking of spending it down a little bit, who should we take a look at on the cheap? I mean, if uh, if you want to go all the way down, right? Like H- H- Hassan Diara is where you feel the most comfortable at four point four k because he's getting you know low twenties minutes about, and that's r- roughly about the amount of run that a that a, that a starter is getting on this year's Yukon team, right? So like you know the 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 value for the amount of time he's on the court is is hard to beat. If you want to go even further down, uh, Samson John- Johnson sitting out there, right? This is the guy that we talked about when we were previewing the the tournament when this all started a few weeks ago. You know, a guy that got some extended run over the, the kind of middle of the season when um, when when Klingon was out with injury and played pretty well during during those stretches, right? So, like, if you're playing a narrative where um, Connecticut wins again by 28 or 30 points, you know, we can see Johnson push for another 15, 17, 20 minutes. If you're playing a narrative where, um, you know, maybe Klingon gets into foul trouble or something like that, right? Like, there, there are some paths for for Samson Johnson to, you know, really be a a very valuable piece. And on on a slate like this, like you, you don't you don't need a a ton out of your you know your high three K guys, right? Like two and a half, three X, and and you're out there cooking. So yeah, definitely worth a sprinkle. But you have to make sure the rest of your builds kind of line up with that that story you're telling. And just looking at the UConn side in in general, I think. I think we're all kind of in lockstep, right? Looking at Tristan Newton, looking at Alex Caravan, guys that haven't really been paying off for for DFS <laughs> players lately. That might be just enough to drag down their ownership to create a little bit of leverage on the field. But secondarily, if if we believe that Klingon is going to be ninety percent or one of the most popular plays on the board, <laughs> like that should create a very clear path to going overweight on on Edie, right? If if you know, there's there aren't going to be builds where you're where, where you're able to roster <laughs> both of them, so oh God, you know getting in on <laughs> you know going overweight on a low owned DD, it could be a real interesting way to attack this slate. What's the over under? What are we going to set it on the ED ownership? Before I, mean, I think ED will be 20, 20 to twenty five. I think Klingon will be fifty. Yeah, there's no way to there's there's no way to play both together. I mean, it's just. I guess you could. If you, yeah. if you I, did, you're going to be playing chalk, chalk. Like you're going to play Hassan Diara. You're going to be playing Lance Jones. You're going to be playing like Fletcher Lawyer. Like you're going to be playing all these guys that are sub five. Not all of these guys are going to hit. So you're, you're probably going to take a, a couple of L's. But you're going to. I mean, if both guys more, go for sixty, like shit. Yeah, you're going to find a lot more TKR in your it. lineups than you're. Really no gonna God. Want. No. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm just saying the. If you're trying to fit them both in, if you're trying to fit in Klingon and 80, it's it's yeah, likely almost threw up, almost threw up it's right there. <laughs> likely going to happen for sure. Good stuff there on the Alabama Yukon tilt. There, of course, the larger of the two totals. Before we move on, any uh, are are we stack looking at stacking this one? Can we are we over if we're of the two games? I should say, um, is this the one we want to be more involved in? Do we think it's going to live up to the hype? Yeah, I just think with the pace, right, the total difference, but that creates leverage, right, to get into the other game. Um, because, like, the price tags are cheaper than we've seen, but they're not, like, they're not, like, I mean, these are some dirt cheap prices over here on the Purdue side outside of, <laughs> outside of 80. Even Braden Smith we'll talk about here in a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking 3-1, three, you know, maybe a, maybe a, at the max for, you know, UConn, 3-1 three, three on the UConn side, Bill's. Feels pretty good because you have the the cheaper guys you can kind of get to in that other game to kind of you know make it work. Um, where it's kind of tough to go real expensive in the other game. Uh, Dr. Is a, like you said, man. Like everyone's gonna play him at forty four hundred. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just a question of what to do with Edie at this point because it's it's not gonna feel fun when you don't have him rostered. Yeah, see, I'm, gonna be I'm with popular too. Sorry, go ahead, Eric. I'm I'm with with Cam here, right? Like I think we're going to see more more of a polarized range on on ownership. I w- I wouldn't be surprised if Edie no. is south of twenty percent. No, Klingin not pushes, in the final four. Past fifty. 
No, people are gonna play Zach where, Eady. Like, it's, where where do you get the money though? Right, like you have if, money. Like you have, well, you just got you're gonna have a chalkier lineup with Zach Eady. Everyone's gonna play the same Zach Eady lineups. That's the difference. But people are gonna, gonna win that, that that's, that's not a that's not a winning build, right? Like, that doesn't, that's I mean, a, I I, I guess you like, could, but you you know that you're setting money on fire. You know, you can split six hundred dollars. I don't know how two hundred ways. I don't know what the twenty. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what the math exactly. is there. <laughs> But that, like, there's a lot of people that are playing in this tournament that have watched the tournament, and we're getting a lot of people that don't play CBB that are going to want to get Zach Eady in. Like, it's just he's the biggest name in college basketball right now. If he's under 20%, like, I'm in trouble. So, <laughs> say it that way. You're either in trouble or in the driver's seat. Who knows? Let's see how it goes. Let's get to that NC State Purdue game, but not before. You do your part in the green screens media universe and hit them buttons, both like and subscribe. Tell the hoop heads in your life about us. Get over to drroto.com. Check out everything that's going on over there as well. Cam already saying he's got Edie and Klingon together in three out of four of his lineups. People are going to them. At least Cam is. <laughs> I bet I could. I bet I could this. name the other by at least five out of six players. In that <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. But again, it's a good way to get up there and get Edie and Klingon in. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be fun. It's, it's a Tetris puzzle. We'll be playing with these guys. Let's get to NC State and Purdue here. A, a little bit. Does the does the spread bother you here? Eleven points. For NC State, uh, according to Ken Palm, nine, nine points, dog, for North Carolina State on DK. So depending on how you're feeling there, a little bit closer on DK. Not the pace in this one that we're going to see in, actually, so the first game we did is the nightcap. So this is the one that's going to lead off on uh on saturday afternoon here purdue is the is a second we're getting obviously we talked about the two best teams in the country uconn is first in offensive efficiency according to ken palm metrics and purdue is second that is not a surprise to anybody that is a pulse and has been watching college basketball all season long like we know you all have uh, they get it done, and they get it done on both ends of the floor. NC State, no slouch, top 45 in offense and defensive efficiency as well. So let's start with NC State. A lot cheaper to get into this team. Um, the Cinderella story, if you will, to make it this far. They were a buzzer beater away from not even making it to the finals of their own conference tournament. Then they won it, and now they are on quite a run here. In the old big dance, and they are inexpensive, Mike, to get into. What do you think? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, I feel like the NC State side's gonna go largely overlooked, right? Like you got the Bama guys at the top, you got the cheap Bama guys, you've got UConn who you pretty much want to play one through six, um, and then you got the Purdue guys, you got Edie and the cheap guy, and then the guys that are randomly cheap on <laughs> on Purdue. So. Probably overlooked uh, all of these guys. Like, I don't see any ownership from ODR. I don't see any ownership for, uh, you know, uh, I don't really see any ownership going to DJ Burns or, or DJ Horn. I just, it's hard because, okay, look, like Cam brought up a point here, and I, I don't want to harp on this for going to the NC State thing, but if you play both of those guys, your average salary is under 5,100. Therefore, there are limited amounts of options that you can play um, in that lineup. So a lot of people are going to try to do it. I get that, and I'm there for it. And that's going to be a winning lineup, absolutely. I feel like you have a better chance of splitting <laughs> with, with more people. Uh, but Moji at 7,300, I mean, foul trouble. Uh, foul trouble could be looming again. But he's also a guy, if you had to pick one guy to challenge ED for a rebound, this guy's an animal on the glass, yeah, just an is. absolute monster on the glass. Right, he's gonna have a problem though matching up. He's the slider guy, slender build, right? More of a shot blocker. Um, I feel like he's uh, if they win this game, we'll be like, oh, Modiara had like a big game. I think people are thinking like DJ Burns, you know, they had he had a big game, but he's Modiara. If they win, it's like, okay, Modiara, like 
did enough on on both ends of the floor to really or did more than what was expected of him on both ends of the floor to win this game. So at seventy three hundred, completely overlooked here. Um, I don't know that I'll get to him. It feels feels ugly, right? It feels dirty playing, especially when you have Ben Middlebrook sitting there at fifty one hundred. Um, I actually have more interest in Ben Middlebrooks at 5,100 because I've been playing him recently and he's been, I mean, yeah, the price tag, like it's 5,100, but give me four X. Like I could see him getting a 20 spot one. He doesn't get the initial ED minutes. Edie's going to come out at some point, unless it's foul trouble for DR, he will come in and not have to face ED at certain points, which is always nice. Um, so you always like that backup big going against ED hell, but the, the third center basically on every game produced played has had to play minutes. Um, guys that aren't really in the rotation have had to play minutes. So it's kind of crazy what this guy does. But Ben Middlebrooks at 5,100, very interesting piece. Um, I feel like if you're playing the uh, the old E.D. Klingon build, <laughs> Ben Middlebrooks actually becomes a, an interesting piece right there at the 5, you know, 5,100 range to play alongside him. Uh, so yeah, I mean, where I, I, I'm not saying I'm not going to have any Klingon E.D. builds. Like I, I will have a couple of them. Uh, but you know the guys you have to go to. It's like, where do you get different? I feel like Ben Middlebrooks, probably not a lot of people, a lot of people would rather go other places. I think him at 5,100 is certainly interesting. We got to talk about the DJs, right? DJ Horn, 6,800. For the price tag and his talent and what he's been doing lately is a little bit too cheap. My question is, are you going to play him over Braden Smith? Are you going to play him over the cheap Purdue guards? Uh, this feels like a one-off side to me, honestly, like all these guys. DJ Horn obviously going to shoot the ball a ton, 41% from three. Which NC State guy is going to get there? And if NC State wins this game, like three of these guys are going off at these price tags. I'll tell you that. So maybe we're doing it wrong. But DJ Burns, $100 cheaper. Has foul troubles as well. Um, we know the usage is crazy. The shot rate's crazy. He can rebound. Uh, obviously, a really good assist. 25% assist rate. Like, God, I just want to see Burns and Edie go at it. Uh, I know we probably won't see that as much, but <laughs> it's definitely going to be fun. Um, I have more interest in DJ Horn, though, in the spot. Just an easier matchup. I don't like playing front court players against Zach Edie. It's so hard to do that. I'd rather play the backup big uh, that actually is a big part of the team offensively when he comes in. So, yeah, I don't know, Eric. Like Michael O'Connell, I completely ripped my heart out the other day with his 33 spot, but he's normally a guy that lives in like the teens, just the low 20s, yeah. playing a ton of minutes. Casey Marcel, I would never play him. Um, even though he's 4,700, people are going to click the button because he's gone into the 20. He plays all the – these guys play minutes, man, like 30 plus. And they're not going to get in foul trouble like the like the bigs, I feel like, would. Or maybe they could. But that might open up a door if, if you want to play a game theory for your boy down here who uh, <laughs> surprised at his price tag, huh? Yeah, the uh, the game theory play is uh, is Jaden Taylor down at three point nine k, right? Like, you know, if if we if we think that really any of the guards, Horn, O'Connell, Marcel, end up in in any sort of foul trouble, you know that that creates a lane for for Jaden Taylor to you know potentially do some things, right? Like a a three point nine k guy with uh 21 percent shot rate with a usage rate in the 20s like you know some of his supporting stats are are definitely strong enough to feel okay about him and and we you know we've we've played him earlier this year when he was like six six and a half k right yeah, so he's like, like high 30s minutes too like <laughs> yeah i mean obviously his his role has changed pretty pretty significantly but the the games where he's getting even just a little bit more run or, or games where he you know he can he can pay off the you know the the value return that you need here again you know sub 4k guy you're getting two and a half three three and a half x you know that that gives you a lot of flexibility and i i don't think a whole lot of people are, are going to go here right like in part your overarching theory that the nc state side is just going to be kind of overlooked and then secondarily like looking at a you know a, a very ancillary piece on their side you know this this might be one of the the rare opportunities to get like a low single digits type of play in into your builds tomorrow tomorrow on saturday what day is it who are, where, who are we? <laughs> what planet what, what's going on here that eclipse is coming and it's throwing us all off uh, who knows the magnets apparently the the 5g is not gonna work what is going on here what, what are we it's doing it's y2k here? let's do it's it all get all again. the water go to the grocery oh, store hurry 
I remember no toilet paper on the shelves. That's happened. I'm sure that'll happen too. Uh, let <laughs> us know in the live chat if you are doomsday hoarding for the eclipse, if it's going to come through your neck, of, your neck of the woods. Or you could just tell us if you're playing Edie, because that's what we're going to talk about right now. Get into the Purdue side. Let the us last know times. <laughs> if you're playing Edie, like Cam is. Cam had mentioned he's playing Edie and clinging together in three out of his four lineups. Is Middle uh, is Middle Brooks in any of those other ones? Cam, let me know because I have a feeling that he is. Um, but Purdue starts with Edie, of course, Mike, and it goes from there. Smith is a stud himself, and then there's just a drop off, like five k and less on yeah. this Purdue side. What so, happened? What happened Oof. to the game I love? No, what, yeah. what yeah. happened? To, I mean, it's, it's Zach Eady and Braden Smith, and then, I mean, spin the, the wheel, my guy. You know, yeah, just pretty much, spin man. Spin it. So, Zach, 11 3, right? Like, I mean, two game slates. What are, what are we doing here? We saw what he did against Tennessee. Um, we've seen what he's done against a lot of people over the last couple of years. And, uh, He's got 70 fantasy point upside. So I I'm not afraid of the NC State front court, even though, you know, they got some they got some dogs, obviously, that have been playing very well. Boy, it's that price tag though, man. So and if we're thinking clinging gonna be over 50%, we're thinking Edie is anywhere near 20. Like sign me up for like 70% Zach Edie. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to be like that because, I mean, Cam's 75% Edie, so I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why the mm -hmm. masses wouldn't at least be 40 to 50 on Edie. Uh, I, I get nervous having too much of him because if he does put up a 46, if somehow he does get into – can you imagine this guy getting into foul trouble? Like, I know he's still going to drop 50. But at 11 3 on a two gamer, like 50 is it's pretty good. Uh, ED Tam near guaranteed 50 plus in this game. NC State, yeah, I mean, they really don't have anything for him. But could something happen? We're all going to say, how many times have we said that? And then like something dumb happens where it's like, how did he get an offensive foul? And then like he challenged him on the rim a minute into the game and then he gets an offensive foul this, at the 18 minute mark. And then he's sitting till like the nine minute mark. Could he still put up 50? Absolutely. We've seen him do it before. Oh yeah, um, but eleven three like that's a price tag to pay. You don't want him to. You don't want him to go under fifty. I'll tell you that uh, because then you're gonna be staring around at some of the mid tier builds and some of the clinging only builds, and you're gonna be like, oh shit, like uh, what, what? What am I up against here? Uh, which is what we saw from the slate the other day. But Braden Smith seventy five hundred. I always, I mean, the kid's a dog. Like I know he hasn't been great. I hope his ownership is way down. At 7,500, I am very interested in Braden Smith. 40% assist rate, 3% steal rate, 44% from three. Should play basically the whole damn game here. At 7,500, mm -hmm. I'm loving the, the, ED, uh, the, the Smith and the Klingon stacks, <clears throat> which I think will be very popular as well. Obviously, two games play, a lot of stuff's going to be popular. But then, Jay, you mentioned it, man. Once you get past Braden Smith, like you have to figure out what is going to happen on this Purdue side. Fletcher Warrior, uh, I was lucky enough to be on him on some lineups at 5,000. Put up the 28. He's playing a pile of minutes, shooting a bunch of threes. He's very shot dependent. So if he does not shoot the ball well, uh, you're probably going to have a hard time paying off the 5K price tag. If you're playing Edie Klingon, you at least want 3X from everybody else in your lineup. Uh, he's a guy that could definitely do that for you. Uh, he's been over 15 in four of the last five. So I got no problem. Uh, Fletcher Lawyer, probably going to be plenty popular after what he did against Tennessee. Lance Jones is too damn cheap at 4,900. Uh, yeah, too damn cheap. He has a higher shot rate than Lawyer. He actually will rebound the ball every now and then. He's got the same assist rate. He's got a 3% steal rate. Now, he doesn't shoot as well from three, but he's taken nearly two times as many threes. So, Lance Jones, for $100 cheaper, like, I hope people don't would rather play Lawyer. I would rather try and get Lance Jones, who is a guy at times, will play 30 minutes. He's going to play 30 minutes. We'll hit 30 fantasy points because he knocks down four or five threes. Picks up a couple extra boards, gets an assist here, and then grabs a couple of steals. So Lance Jones at 4,900. You have to determine, do you want the guards or do you want this spin the wheel forwards here with Mason Gillis and TKR? I've been telling everybody, play Mason Gillis. Now TKR is cheaper. Gillis has been playing well. What do you think I think is going to happen? TKR is going to have a <laughs> hell of a first six minutes of the game probably. Honestly, like it's just tough <clears throat> picking one of the two. Like you kind of just flip a coin. 
I don't like TKR as much because he starts with ED. So it's like, there's just an opportunity for him to just never see the ball, even though ED gets doubled and he just drops it down to him. He has an easy layup against Utah State and gets fouled. There's times when, I mean, one of the guys is going to put up at least 15 fantasy points, and they're probably going to be on one of those, is probably going to be on the optimal. Uh, who that is, Jay, Eric, flip a coin on these four guys. Yeah. One, like at least one or two of these guys are going to be on the optimal well, with that was ED my probably. Question. That was my question, Eric. Was I wanted to ask you, like, can you can you play? Can you stack ED with another player on this side and expect to get that optimal lineup? And if so, who are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, you, you you definitely can, right? Like, sort of every type of texture and and build is is on the on the table, right? Um, so I, I don't think anything is just completely scratched off. Um, I, I think Mike's read is is probably pretty spot on. You know, most people are going to go to to Gillis down here towards mm-hmm. the bottom end of the pay scale. You know, if you're thinking that, I would much rather find the three hundred bucks to get up to Lance Jones. Um, and then there's there's Kaufman Wren just you know uh, screaming leverage right. No one's really going to go there after a three and a six spot. So yeah, I mean like you know uh, uh, all these guys are are probably going to be sprinkled in. This is certainly a slate to play you know multiple multiple lineups in. But I, I mean look like Ed is is probably going to be rostered with you know at least one other Purdue guy on pretty much all of the builds right. Like they're it's it's hard to find 5k and below guys that are going to get the the kind of run from you know some of the players that we've talked about here so yeah, there's one, there's going to be a lot of right? yeah, yeah two three way sa- stacks on the here, produce yeah. side yeah anybody cheap anybody really cheap on this side like can we look under 4k on this on this side i mean if if we're going real cheap you can go down <laughs> to to hide i guess right like Oh, how how does he get there? Um, oh, Heidi, Heidi Ho, Heidi, he, Heidi Ho. Yeah, exactly right. Like the the path to paying off isn't super clear. I, I guess you know for him, like he's he's a really effective uh, shooter from outside. So if he's getting a you know a couple extra looks from from behind the arc, um, you know maybe Lance Jones, you know to to Mike's point, shooting. Over 203 attempts, maybe maybe he gets a little cold from from downtown, and we see we see Heidi pull pull the trigger on a few more. You know, he can he can be like a sneaky kind of secondary value option, but I, I mean, to feel even remotely good about him, like you're really banking on one of the starters ending up in some foul trouble. Got to get a got to get into those those different theories, and you got to got to take it down whatever narrative street you want to drive down whatever you think is going to get you to the top of those standings. It's a lot of different ways to approach it. And somebody's we're going to look at it. We're going to look at that optimal and just be like, oh, <laughs> man, uh, if I could have just done this. Oh, wait, except that's going to be one of us probably on the <laughs> screen. And if it's not going to be one of us, it might be our guy Cam, who who said that Middlebrooks is, in fact, in one of his ED cleaning at Linos, but Newton – in two of the other three, yeah. Newton? Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm assuming Cam on all four lines has the San DR, right, because that's 4,400. So he's going to bump his average up to 52, 53. I mean, if you play Newton at that point, yeah, there you are. He's probably got Lance Jones in there. He's Jones. got one of TKR, either Jones. He's split, basically going to split the two guards from Purdue. He's going to split the two forwards from Purdue. Um, you know, he's got Middlebrooks on one, so he's got the other 5K play probably going down to a – you know, yeah, I would assume maybe a Stevenson or, you know, someone like Caravan and then playing a super cheap guy. So, yeah, um, that's that's pretty much the path. If you get a third star in there, like Newton, I think that's how you can get different with the uh, the ED Klingon builds. Because a lot of people are going to eat and ED, <laughs> ED and Klingon is that baby, ED, Klingon, and the DR. That's going to be like the first, the, the first people, you know, you get to open your app, those are the first three guys that you click in there. And you're like, what can I do with this? That's, I think that's kind of the the way it goes, right? Instead of which pillar do I want to build around, uh, essentially. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and Mills on. Mills pays bills is sort of agreeing with you in terms of having to have, you know, yeah. multiple multiple lineups no added, to know. multiple ways to approach it. 
because it is a lot of dart throws and spinning the wheel and all that stuff, especially like I'm tinkering with it, like while we're doing it live and with, uh, you know, having Edie and Sears uh, both as like my top guys and then everybody else is, you know, 5.2 and below because you Mm -hmm. have to be. And that's just where you're living there. So uh, it's you probably will have to, to get a couple of of attempts at it. Cam saying he has four. I'm guessing he means in the in the 20k one. Doesn't matter if you do or not. But to get to win, to come out ahead in this one, um, gonna probably have to take multiple stabs at it and just move everything <laughs> around. Lots of ways to get it creative. Lots of ways to be a little bit different. Got to run those scenarios through your head. And, uh, you know, the, who, who's going to get into foul trouble and um, who's going to play, who's going to be on the floor for 40 minutes? You know, we were talking about those guys from Alabama earlier, like Sears and Estrada are just going to just, it's max minutes. And so pick one and go with it. You know, I may have to pull Sears out and go to Estrada because I do want one of those guards in that game. Um, but yeah, just trying to get different with it and trying to get creative because I'm trying to see some commas and not some <laughs> comas, my guys. The all comma team, oh, yeah, of course, is what we're searching for. I let off with it in the cold open, talk about the core four and so much more. And it is now time for the heralded, the often imitated but never duplicated <laughs> one and duplicated, done duplicated, duplicated. core. For and a lot of times what we do is we give you cash and uh, tournament builds. A little bit different though on this two game slate, right, Mike? I think I think approaching it from the way of sort of again you were mentioned earlier, the guys that you just open the app and you hit it and then you go from there. That's sort of like the chalk approach, right? But the contrarian lineup is often the way to go, and we know our guy Eric lives over there in the <laughs> in the, in the contrarian, contrarian forest. Yeah. He, <laughs> Yeah, he, he is indeed a lumberjack in the contrarian forest. So uh, let's start with the chalk core four, though, first, Mike. And, of yeah. course, it leads off with Edie. Yeah, I mean, I, I just – I don't – I'm having a hard time wrapping my around. I, that he's at at least 33. I mean, 33%. Uh, Zach Edie, 11-3. Donovan Klingon, 83. And then, yeah, you split one of the cheap guards. It's either going to be, uh, you know, Lance Jones or Lawyer. 5,000 or 4,900, but Jones in this one, then obviously Hassan DR, like Jay said, like it's if you're not playing DR, like that's kind of scary, uh, especially if you're trying to get studs in, which uh, there's not much of a mid tier, really. I mean, unless you want to play Grant Nelson and <laughs> and some of his finest Jeez, friends in that six K range, <laughs> uh, you want to play Grant Nelson, uh, you know, uh, Alex Caravan and Nick Pringle lineups, then I guess you could do that. Um, but that's not really a path to go. So that's going to be a 52.75 right here on this uh, on this kind of chalkier type build that people are going to start with. I'm not saying it's going to be chalky as in, like, maybe people see this and they're like, damn, I can't, dude, I can't. I, there's just no way I feel comfortable paying for this many sub 5K guys and maybe not even getting another star in there. Um, for contrarian type builds, uh, I think it's different, right? Like, it's scary when you have some of the best players in the game that may not be as owned, even 20. Right? Mark Sears at 8,400. Like, how do you get to him? I'm trying. I'm trying. How right do you now. get to Mark Sears? <laughs> yeah. Tough. Like, how do you get to Mark Sears? Like, you can't get to him with Edie and Klingon um, unless you're just like pounding that. Golly, like you're playing Samson Johnson and somebody you got, else. You um, got Diabati, you got Diabati <laughs> and, and, and Walters in. Like, sorry, yeah, but, like it's tough. So Mark Sears, I feel because the playing going to be very popular, that Tristan Newton is a contrarian type play. Um, and then you have Braden Smith because everyone wants to go to Edie. Um, and the cheaper guards, like Braden Smith's in this, like, this weird category. He's like a 7,500. It's so far away from Edie. He's so far away from everybody else on his team. He's just right there in the middle, and I just don't know that people are going to want to click his name because it's cost, it costs a lot of it's opportunity costs. It's like, do I want to play Edie or do I want to play one of the cheap guys? Um, and then I just think Hassan Diar has to be has to be in your lineup, man. Like, I just mm-hmm. – I don't see another way. I, even if he puts up a 13, he's still going to be optimal at 40. I was hoping he would come in and be like 500 or 5,000 just so people would have to, like, think about – this right, like, and even at five thousand, I, I would, I would think about it at five thousand. But at forty four hundred, it's still just too cheap, even if he goes three x, you know. So, um, yeah, that pops off. Any uh, any takes on this, Eric? Uh, 
what are your thoughts, man? Because I we yeah, don't know man. how ownership's gonna be. And when we sometimes when we do this damn thing and we see the numbers and we're like, how did this happen? How is well, what, two two three years ago we got all the UNC guys for like three yeah. <laughs> percent and they lost by thirty at Miami. It was, like, it was that Miami game that still haunts our our nightmares. Uh, yeah, look the uh, the moral of that story is uh, take the take the the volume shooter approach, right? Like we we feel like we've got a pretty good read on how ownership is going to shake out, but like you, fire off a few more shells to to cover cover your basis on some guys that. Uh, on on some ownership makeup that might be a little bit different than what we're projecting because it's it's an inexact science in terms of your uh in terms of your two cores here i think you're spot on in the in the chalk core right like you know not not necessarily that we're going to see um you know those four players be the most popular players individually on the on the board but in terms of starting a build with uh with ed and with Klingon, you're going <laughs> to see diara on 100 percent of those bills and <laughs> yeah. you're probably gonna see uh you know jones right there right there on about 80 percent of them right so like that sort of like texture is gonna be a super super popular combination on your contrarian one this scares the piss out of me right we have talked all season about how how terrifying it is to speculate specifically with forward right. value you've got 5.5k a little bit less than to exclusively spend on forwards here, right? So, like, if you go out and you add in Ben Middlebrooks, you're still having to roster probably <laughs> two guys that are sub 6K at the forward position so you can get up to Gillis. Grant Nelson, right? Like, oh, you're goodness. you're really – you're you're kissing some frogs here at the bottom end <laughs> of the forward range, right? So, I, I, I agree in principle, right? Like, these four guys that you laid out are going to be far less popular, right? But I would – I would probably be inclined to move one of them on to yeah. a more popular right. kind of pay up type of option at forward, just so you're not you're not exclusively looking at the value options for the forward position. I'm just gonna laugh when Klingon or Edie gets into foul trouble. Like it's just gonna be yeah. <laughs> Edie gets into foul trouble. Klingon slips on a banana peel, and all of a sudden <laughs> it's just chaos. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's the Grant Nelson show. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> You're telling me it couldn't happen, man. Are we getting Grant Nelson one shining moment? Is it gonna oh, happen? Geez. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Would be what a world we what a world we live in. Yeah, oh, I'm man. trying to fit in Sears and Edie, and I'm not having much luck right now. But we're it's gonna all. try to make it work. <laughs> it, it is very difficult. I've been trying to figure out a way to do it, and it's just oof, oof. you're gonna get to Sears clinging, and then you're gonna drop in TKR with with Braden Smith. <laughs> no, uh, I don't wanna. I don't wanna do it. No ED for you, sir. Hey, oh, I, um, I'm I'm dropping them in. I got to. I got I gotta have one of at least one of each, one with and one without in that in that big one i gotta have it gotta go at least 50 50 here with ed because i think he is gonna be like at, at 35 36 yeah like, I, I don't know man it's I gonna be he's, people are gonna it's, do the, it. it's the it's always the damn he's the key to obviously every slate and we're almost done we're almost done with these key to slates with zach ed uh we almost made it, and we have almost made it to the end of one and done here after our core four. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Of course, doing your part in the Green Screens Media Universe. Telling the hoop heads in your life is one of the best things that you can do as well. Get them over true. to the YouTube channel, Green Screens Media, of course. At one and done CBB is the Twitter handle at get green screens on Twitter as well. And then at get green screens over on TikTok. My chat was rolling mills paid bills with some kind words here at the end of the show. Hey, Just wanted to say really appreciate guy. you guys and discover the channel back in January. I wish I would have had found it earlier in the season. We do too, because you are a very active member of the community and we appreciate you hanging out in the live chat as always. We're happy to hang out with you. Thanks for the shout out, Mills Pays Bills. Of course, Cam is all over the live chat like normal. Forklift Jeremy dropping the flame emojis, little fire emojis in there at the top of the show. And David Galloway as well saying we needed to finish strong. And we will finish strong here. Make sure 
You're following all of us on Twitter. Follow at one and done CBB because we want to make sure that right cell is going to play because I'm already trying to cram him into this lineup with Edie and Sears, but I, I want, I'm trying to make it, make sure that he's there along with metal Brooks because it's just, it's, it's going to happen. I think those guys are going to be so popular and we hope your lineups turn out the way that you want them. Make sure you tell somebody that you love them. Take care of yourself. Most importantly, and then second most importantly, let's get this spread, baby. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.